welcome to the Great Detectives of Old Time Radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me, box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com slash Radio Detectives. Before we get started, I do want to let you know the program's brought to you by the financial support of our listeners. You can support the show on a one-time basis at support.greatdetectives.net. You can also pledge to give a monthly amount of as little as $2 or more a month uh, to support the show, patreon.greatdetectives.net. Well, now we turn to the syndicated run of Boston Blackie. The NBC series starring Chester Morris came to an end uh, after the summer of 1944. But Frederick Ziv, who uh, was already getting big into syndicated program, decided to do a syndicated version of Boston Blackie. It would be produced in New York and sent by transcription discs throughout the country. The series was incredibly popular. It was also very long-lived for syndicated radio program, or for any other radio program at all. Uh, Richard Colmer is estimated to have done 200 and 88 episodes of Boston Blackie, of which 190 are in circulation. It had a slightly different format with the addition of Mary Wesley, but other than that, it was pretty familiar to uh, what we'd heard before, just with a different set of actors. Let's go ahead and let's take a listen to the first episode we have in circulation. According to the Digital Deli FTP, it's overall the third episode of the series. The original air date, April the 25th of 1945, and the title is The Wentworth Diamonds. <laughs> have all taken seats that satisfy you, gentlemen. We will proceed at once with the business at hand. Good. Uh, yeah, maps, yeah. photographs, and other data, Miss Arden. In your portfolio, Mr. Father. Thank you, thank you. Gentlemen, we are faced with a crisis. We're in dire need of funds. And we shall acquire said funds from the Wentworth Diamond. But net profit to us, a half million dollars. Uh, of course, the Wentworth rocks are too hot to handle. Uh, the main stone, yes. We have no interest in that. We shall acquire our revenue from the two dozen smaller stones of the Wentworth collection. Uh, are we going to take it out of Lady Wentworth's home? Lady Wentworth has only a paste copy of the diamonds in her name. The real diamonds are in the National Vault. At 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, the diamonds are to be transferred by armored truck from the National Vault for two weeks' display at the Manchester Museum. It is there that we um, appropriate them. They'll be heavily guarded at the museum, won't they? Uh, you will hire a dozen of the city's most capable trigger men. They'll be paid well. Uh, I get it. Rough stuff. Huh? Uh, you will lead the operations, Mr. Adams. Six guards will stand in our way. The two at the front door can be subdued at trigger point. The two at the entrance to the gallery in which the Wentworth collection is being displayed may have to be rendered uh, unconscious. The other two? The other two will be guarding the Wentworth Diamonds. They are to be killed. When do you plan to do this? I'll inform you of the exact day and time of day. In the meantime, you'll study these maps and photographs at the Manchester Museum. Oh, 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 uh, one more thing. More? Yes, yes. We now come to that portion of our plans which involves the person known as Boston Blackie. <laughs> And now meet Richard Colmer as Boston Blackie. Enemy to those who make him an enemy. Friend to those who have no friends. Like walking in the rain, Blackie? That's a leading question. Where does it lead? Well, right now, Mary, around the corner to your apartment. Okay. Oh, it's been a wonderful evening. Yeah. 
I hope the three of us enjoyed it. The three of us? Sure. You and I and the man who's been following us. Someone following us? Why? Never had a man follow you before? Oh. Did you see someone? Yes. What do we do? Keep talking. About what? Oh, anything. Tell me a funny story. A funny story. So when I get through with him, this guy following us will have something to laugh about. All right. After we turn this corner here, I'll stop. But you go ahead. Cut across the grass and keep talking all the time. Here's the corner. Now, keep going. I'll hug the wall and get this fellow as he goes by. But what if he puts up a fight? About the only thing he'll get to put up is a squawk. Now, keep on talking. I stop here. Wish me luck. I do. It was really the funniest thing that's happened to me in weeks, Blackie. The telephone rang about 7 o'clock this morning. And a squeaky little voice asked for Ozzy. All right, you reach. Chief Boss, don't, don't shoot. It's me. Shorty. Well, what? Oh, wait a minute. Hey, Mary. Come on back. It's all right. It's a friend of mine. Uh, I've been telling you all night, boss. i, I got to talk to you. But and not with a dame, Blackie. I, I can't. Since one of you turned girl shy? Uh, this is Mary Wesley, Shorty. Mary, this is Shorty, an old pal of mine. Oh, uh, how, how do you do? Boss, i got to talk to you. And where nobody can see us. Well, if you two want to talk, you can come up to my apartment. Next, boss. That this got to be private conferring. Come on, Shorty. It's all right. Mary doesn't talk. And besides, she makes good coffee. Oh. Hey, boss. Hey, you're, you're right as a parson. This is sure good coffee. How right are you about this frame? That's what I'd like to know. Well, I, I told you all I know, Blackie. And that's all I know. A high-class operator is going to snatch the Wentworth diamonds from the Manchester museums. And you got it straight from one of the hoods who was hired as a trigger man. Well, from a guy who knew a guy who was hired. But I don't understand how they're going to involve you, Blackie. Well, the uh, plan seems to be this. To dress one of the gunmen to look like me. He'll be called, uh, <laughs> Blackie several times during the holdup. Yeah, and they figure to knock off a couple of guards, see? So Blackie will get wrapped by the cops for murder. And then to cinch it... They're planting the big Wentworth diamond in Blackie's apartment. Is this really true? Probably, but that doesn't mean it's going to work. Well, what are you going to do? I don't know. I don't know when they're planning the robbery, so I don't know when to make sure to have an alibi. This is cute. Well, why don't you try calling Inspector Faraday? When I want somebody to laugh at me, I'll tell jokes. Oh, please, Blackie, please. It's the smartest thing. Will it make you happy? Very. All right. Thanks. I've always wanted a legitimate excuse to wake Faraday in the middle of the night anyway. Oh, he'll listen to you. I just know it. <laughs> like I listen to opera. Faraday's probably snoring so loud that he would... Hello? Faraday, this is your old pal Blackie. Blackie, what's the idea of calling me up this time of night? <laughs> what's the matter, Sleeping Beauty? Were you dreaming you had the goods on me at last? Did you call me up to make jokes, Blackie? Because if you did, I... No. Listen, Inspector, and listen carefully. I'm not listening to anything from you. Go to bed and let me get some sleep. Wait. Faraday. Faraday. Did he hang up? Well, he didn't exactly invite me over for a midnight snack. Well, gee, boss, now what do we do? I know what you're going to do, Blackie. Leave town. Yeah, yeah, the lady's right, boss. You, you can't have no alibi two weeks long in this town. But if you just lamb out of town for two weeks... I well... don't like to take it on the chin any more than anybody else. But I'm not going to take it on the lamb. Oh, I know what you're thinking, darling. It's running away and you don't want to run away. But please, Blackie, please do it for me. Mm, I must be getting soft. Well, it's the thing you gotta do, boss. F for the lady's sake. Now, I'll get your train or plane reservations. You go to your apartment with Shorty and I'll phone you there. I don't know why I'm doing this. I guess those looks of yours sure pack a wallop. Never mind my looks. You just see to it that you pack a bag. Uh, how many shorts you want in this suitcase, boss? Oh, I don't know. Gosh, I wish that Chicago call would come in. Oh, well. Uh, Shorty... Is there something that maybe you haven't told me yet? For instance, what time tomorrow are the diamonds being taken from the National Vaults to the museum? Uh, seven o'clock. To be in a museum at eight, see? An armored car is picking them up. No chance they intend to steal them or root. They're too well guarded in an armored car. Gee, boss. How do you know the diamonds would be picked up at the National Vaults instead of Lady Wentworth's house? Lady Wentworth wears only paste copies of the Wentworth diamonds. The real ones have always been in a vault. Gee, you know everything, boss. Well, I know I'm in the clear till those stones get to the museum at 8 tomorrow morning. Hmm. This is probably my Chicago call now. Or the dame with the reservations on a train, maybe. Hello? 
Blackie, this is Mary. I couldn't get a plane reservation at all. I got a train reservation to Chicago, just as you wanted. But it's not until Friday. All right, then I'll leave on Friday. Oh, but Blackie, to be perfectly safe, you have to be out of town before tomorrow morning. Look, honey, don't worry. Uh, I'll play Invisible Man until Friday. But I am worried, darling. What if they rob the museum before Friday? Then I'm in a jam. Well, if having an alibi will help, can't someone be with you all the time? You like the job for yourself? Oh, Blackie. Hmm. Oh, Blackie, be serious. You know I can't meet you until 4 o'clock. That has to be a date. All right. Well, be careful, darling. And call me in the morning. I'll give you a ring at 10. See that you do. Night. Good night. Well, Shorty, looks like you and I have a chance to have a little fun. I can't leave town till Friday. Oh, gee, boss. But you better tell your pal Kingston in Chicago and tell him you're not coming the same until Friday, huh? Not at all, short one. He's well, going to help me. Oh. But, gosh, what can he do? He's in Chicago. He can give me a hand through one of his branch offices here. If I was... Oh, that's probably Charlie now. Uh. Hello? Mr. Charles Kingston of the Kingston Corporation in Chicago calling Mr. Boston Blackie. I'll take it, operator. Here's your party, Mr. Kingston. Hello, Blackie. Hello, Charlie. How are you, fella? Oh, swell, Charlie. Is the man who does favors in? Good. You can write your own ticket, Blackie. What is it? Can you hear me clearly? Go, go ahead. All right, Charlie. Here's what I want you to do. Hello? Morning, Mary. Oh, Blackie, I've worried all night long. Where are you? In my apartment. Stop worrying. But, Blackie, as long as you're in town and those... Look, Mary, everything's going to be all right. There's nothing to the... Uh... Blackie! Blackie! What's the matter? Blackie! May I see the timetable of the Wentworth Diamond robbery, Hazel? Here you are, Mr. Farthing. Good. Now, um, here on the chart, we can see what progress we will make today. Mm -hmm. It's 1.30. The men are here at this moment, a mile and a half south of the museum. Mm -hmm. In 15 minutes, the first of them will enter the museum and take their places. In 30 minutes, it'll all be over. <laughs> <laughs> You're smiling. Yes. You like the way I plan. Obviously. Ah, if my schedule's right, this should be Mr. Boston Blackie. Come in. Here he is, Mr. Farthing. Boston Blackie. Oh. Won't you come in, Blackie? Do I have a choice? Not for the present. That'll be all, Tom. Right. I'm Roger Farthing. This is Miss Hazel Arden, my secretary. Hazel, the famous Boston Blackie. How do you do? How are you? Mm -hmm. You uh, know why you're here? Not to play house. When do my teeth start chattering? In uh, exactly 22 minutes, men in my employ are going to steal the Wentworth diamonds from the Manchester Museum and inadvertently kill two of the guards. One of the gunmen will be referred to by the others as uh, Blackie. You begin to see? Seeing is a little habit I picked up some time ago. Splendid. <laughs> as you probably know, the main Wentworth diamond is too distinctive to be of value to anyone other than its rightful owner. So? So... One of my associates is placing it in your apartment shortly after the robbery, then informing the police of its whereabouts. You will be forced to remain here until it is found. You understand? Perfectly. You know something, Blackie? Nothing disturbs you. I'd like to have you on my side. You want me on your side? Believe me, Farthing. You'd be more comfortable with acute appendicitis. <laughs> This way to the display of the Wentworth Diamonds, the Arling yeah, Gallery to the right. This way I saw a couple of the cars the drive up Wentworth across the street. The Boy should be coming through the front door in a minute, right? There they are. Took care of the guards at the door. Go ahead, do your stuff. All right, everybody, get back. Keep quiet. This isn't any fool. Over this way, Blackie, in here. Come on, gang. Blackie, over this way. Blackie, get those two guards. Cut them down. Cut them down. I got the diamonds. Let's go. Nice shooting, Blackie. Nice shooting. Those guards never know what hit them. Faraday. Inspector, this is Mary Wesley. Yeah? You remember me, don't you? Oh, I remember all of Boston Blackie's friends. So I can identify him when we pull him out of the river. What do you want? I talked to Blackie on the phone at 10 o'clock this morning. We were cut off. 
I haven't heard from him since. Oh, don't let that surprise you. But I had a date with him at 4 o'clock and he didn't show up. I'm worried about him. I think you should be. Has something happened? Plenty. I hope you like music, Miss Wesley, because you're playing second fiddle to the Wentworth Diamonds. Blackie stole them this afternoon. Now, back to our story. When we left Boston Blackie, he was, to all appearances, hopelessly victimized by Roger Farthing's plan to frame him for the theft of the Wentworth diamonds and the murder of the two museum guards. As provided in Farthing's plan, the police have been notified that the main Wentworth diamond is in Blackie's apartment. And as we continue our story, Inspector Faraday knocks on Blackie's door. Okay, Blackie. Come on, open up in there. Open up! All right, Hi, Black. Inspector. Okay, Shorty. Go on, get back in the apartment. Where's Blackie? Where's the Wentworth Diamond? The Wentworth Diamond, Inspector? Shorty, the only time you look smart is when you're trying to look dumb. Oh, gee, thanks. Sit down over there and behave yourself. I'm going to look around for that diamond. Oh, Inspector, there ain't no jewel around here. In that drawer or anywhere else. He not only stole the entire Wentworth collection, but he killed two guards. And you can't get out of a rap like that with a suspended sentence. Well, nothing in here. Maybe this drawer. Look, Inspector, I can tell you the whole thing from the beginning, if you'll believe me. Yeah? Blackie rehearsed you? Look, do you remember when Blackie was... Oh, the jewel wasn't here, huh? What's this, a kid's marble? Gee, hey, that rock's got more sparkle than a pinwheel. Yeah, this is the Wentworth diamond, all right. Now, what do you do with the smaller ones? You mean, you mean there's more? You know there are more. All around here, some... Uh-oh. Someone's coming down the hall. It's probably Blackie. Turn out the lights. Oh, Inspector. Turn I... out those lights. Yes, sir. This is going to be wonderful. Wise guy knocking on his own door. Is that a signal to you? It don't mean nothing to me. I, I... I'll open it. Blackie, are you... Oh. Uh, Miss Wesley, it's you. Is Blackie here? Turn on the lights, Shorty. Oh, sure thing. Hi, Miss Wesley. Shorty, where is he? What happened to him? Well, didn't he meet you? No. And when he called me, we were cut off. I don't know what happened. Oh, gee. Okay, you two. Make yourselves comfortable. Because we're going to wait right here for Blackie. Oh, gee, Inspector, I think you're way off base. You... Think so, huh? Well, we're waiting here all night if we have to. Because with Miss Wesley here, I'll guarantee Blackie thinks there's no base like home. <laughs> Mr. Farthing. Oh, oh. Mr. Farthing. Ah, I must have fallen asleep, Hazel. Sleep well earned. You've released Boston Blackie? Yes, yes. Before very long, we shall hear that he's been picked up for robbery. And murder. <laughs> and tomorrow morning, I shall have in my hands 24 of the most precious diamonds in the world. Tomorrow morning, Mr. Farthing? You mean this morning? Oh, it is quite late, isn't it? Nearly mid-morning. I suggest you go to your room and try to sleep, Hazel. And if you are addicted to dreams, my dear... Perchance you can dream of the crime so perfect that it costs nothing but the life of Boston Blackie. Uh, oh, gee, Inspector. It's the middle of the morning. Hey, when do we get out of here, huh? When I say you do, not before. So don't keep asking. Uh-oh, there's a key in the door. It's probably Blackie. Quiet. Mary, show me. Good morning. What, what? Hold it, Blackie. Oh, Inspector, do you have to turn up when I feel refreshed and happy? One look at you and I'm 20 years older. You're not going to live 20 years, Blackie. What they do to you for murder in this state isn't good for your health. What did I do, kill one of your jokes? You killed two guards at the Manchester Museum yesterday. Don't, don't be a fool, Faraday. I wasn't near the Manchester Museum when those guards were killed. Then where did you get this diamond I found in your drawer? At the five and ten? I could get one like that off a chandelier, Inspector. That's a phony. That's the central diamond from the Wentworth Collection. And you know it. I don't even know that the diamonds were stolen. What? For all I know, they're still in the Manchester Museum, just where they ought to be. Sometimes I think you ought to have your head examined. There are witnesses who saw you there. I find the diamond in your apartment, and you tell me the Wentworth jewels are still in the museum. Come on, what did you do with the smaller stones? Mary, call the museum, will you? Sure. The phone number is Plaza 39613. That kind of a stall isn't going to get you anywhere, Blanky. 
Forget about that phone call, Miss Wesley. Make it, Mary. And don't be a dope, Faraday. Wait a minute. Oh, what'll I say? Uh, tell the museum you're calling for Inspector Faraday. All right. I'm not going to wait around for any phone call. Uh, where would you like to meet us, uh, Inspector? Uh, at the Ritz or the Roney? Very funny, Blackie. But I don't need a phone call to prove those diamonds were stolen. I got one of them right in my hand. Roll that stone out, Inspector, and it'd make a nice window pane. Hello, Manchester Museum. I'm calling for Inspector Faraday. Yes, of, of police headquarters. <laughs> they don't even know you, pal. Oh, uh, yes, just a minute. He wants to talk to you, Inspector. Yeah? We didn't know who I was, huh? Give me that phone. Blackie, he said he's been trying to reach the Inspector Hello, all morning. Hello, this is Faraday Most people don't know when they're well What off. do you want? <laughs> the Wentworth diamonds are in their display case. What? Sure, sure. I'll be right down. I told you the diamonds were right where they belong, Faraday. Have a nice trip down there. Mary and I are going to have some breakfast. You too, Shorty. Come on. Just a minute, Blanky. I don't fall for you any of the tricks this easy. I'm going down to have a look at those jewels, all right. But you're going with me. Here are the diamonds, Inspector, just as they were before the robbery. I don't understand it, but here they are. How do I know these aren't phony? I beg your pardon, Inspector, but I'm an expert in such matters. What about this diamond in my hand? It's paste. And what's this gag about the jewels being stolen and two guards killed? Well, it's all very true, Inspector, but this morning when I came into the museum, here were the diamonds just as they were before the unfortunate incident. It's amazing. Happy, Faraday? All the diamonds are here? All but one small stone. We're so happy to have the other diamond return. We aren't terribly concerned well, about... Well, I'm concerned. Especially about those two murdered guards. I'll tell you where you can find that missing stone, Faraday, and the man responsible for the death of the two guards. In your apartment? No, in room 909 in the Winston Hotel. In the handkerchief pocket of a friend of mine. Blackie, you're getting deeper and deeper into this every minute. I'll be in plenty deep if a certain party had a cold last night. A diamond that size is nothing to sneeze at. Here's room 909. Whose room is this? You'll see. Yes? Hello, beautiful. What do you want? In. Come on, Inspector. I'm with you. How dare you force your way in here? I seemed welcome enough here yesterday. Where's Farthing? Who's out there? Don't talk, beautiful. He's in there, Inspector. Come on. Mr. Farthing, it's the police. What's the meaning of... You two know each other, don't you? Hello, Farthing. I didn't know you were in town. Oh, good morning, Inspector. I was just in town for the day on a buying trip. Buying diamonds, Inspector. Diamonds? For free. Look in his handkerchief pocket, Faraday. I'm in no mood for practical jokes, gentlemen. I have a business appointment that you I... You may have to reach to... inside for the stone, yep. Faraday. The handkerchief may not pull it out. We'll see. There. What fell on the desk, Inspector? Looks like a diamond to me. Farthing, if this is from the Wentworth Collection, I'm arresting you for murder and robbery. It's from the Wentworth Collection, all right. From the looks of it, I'd say the same thing. Congratulations, Blackie. Farthing, do you admit this is a Wentworth diamond? Oh, I see no reason why I shouldn't. You'll discover it for yourself in due time. <laughs> I know when I'm beaten, but I don't know how. Hmm, Blackie? Sorry, Farthing. That's a secret of the profession. If we of the same profession were alone... Same profession? Don't flatter yourself, Farthing. Uh, Inspector, would you be so kind? Let us have five minutes alone, Faraday. It's all right. <laughs> I'm not the type to run away from anything once I run into it. It's entirely safe. Well, with Blackie in here and me outside the door, I guess it's okay. Five minutes, no more. <sighs> Sit down. Thanks. You're a good sport, Farling. Uh, Sit right here. A gambler has to be a good sport. Yes, I guess he does. I'm amazed. How did you do it, Blackie? When? The diamond in your pocket? It wasn't easy. You didn't let me get close to you but once when I was here yesterday. Fortunately, once was enough. But that's so utterly impossible. The diamonds were still in the museum when you were here yesterday. That's where you're wrong, Farthing. The diamonds were never in the museum. Only a set of paste. Fire? I switched them myself at the National Vaults, 8 o'clock yesterday morning. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. Tell me how. Well, the first thing I did was to borrow Lady Wentworth's paste set. Mm -hmm. That was easy. Lady Wentworth is away. The paste set is not locked up because it's worthless. Then I hired an armored car. That alone is no simple matter. It was simple enough for my friend Charlie Kingston. Of Chicago? Yes. He hired an armored car for me through his local office. Oh, 
And how did you use this armored car? My friend Shorty and I dressed as bank guards and went to the delivery entrance of the vaults a little before eight with the paste diamonds in a case just like the ones the real diamonds were in. I see you. You stayed just inside the delivery entrance until the armored truck came along, then, then walked out with the paste diamonds and <laughs> gave them to the driver. <laughs> well, that was no problem. We weren't stealing anything, just handing to the driver something he expected to get. So far, brilliant, brilliant. Then what? Then Shorty and I got our own armored car from around the block, drove it to the delivery entrance of the vault, and picked up the real diamonds from the real bank guards. Ah, that was simple, too, because the bank guards expected to see an armored car outside the delivery entrance. So a set of phonies went to the museum, and I kept the real set. Until after your men robbed the museum... Then I broke into the museum at night and delivered the real diamonds, that is, all except the one small stone which I planted on you. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks. That's a lot coming from you under the circumstances. I am an artist in my way, Blackie, and you're an artist in yours. <laughs> Does one great painter scoff at the work of another because the other's artistry is superior to his own? Maybe you're not the artist you think, Farling. Why do you say that? The idea of involving me... It seems to me that a good artist concentrates more on the picture and a little less on the frame. Oh, Blackie, look at those lovely diamonds in this window. Aren't those engagement rings beautiful? They sure are. Oh, how I'd love to have that one there. You would? Well, it, um, it might depend on who gave it to me. Oh. I might like you to give me one someday. Except. Except what? Except I'd never be quite sure just how you got it. This is Andrew from otrwesterns.com. I wanted to invite you to come take a look at our site. We stream live OTR Westerns 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, along with putting out podcasts of old-time radio westerns. Check us out at otrwesterns.com. You're listening to The Great Detectives of Old-Time Radio with Adam Graham. Now let's get back into the show. Welcome back. I did like Blackie's last line to the uh, thief, 
And it's certainly not only clever, but really true. And and why you would tangle with Boston Blackie uh, as a part of your plan is a uh, mystery to me. And even though the Digital Daily FDP said it was a third episode, this does feel a little bit like a first what with Shorty not knowing Mary Wesley. Overall, even though there wasn't a whole lot of mystery, there was a nice little bit of a twist, and I found it uh, enjoyable, and we've got much more to come. All right, well, uh, that will actually do it for today. Join us back here tomorrow for yours truly, Johnny Dollar. And next Thursday, another episode of Boston Blackie. In the meantime, send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and uh, become one of our friends on Facebook, facebook.com.